Hello, hello you guys, welcome back to another video here on my channel. Like I said, for this month, I'm gonna be doing all spooky themed things, so it's no different today. So if you're new here, welcome. I like to do movie reactions, movie reviews, book re um, reviews and book content as well as makeup content. And sometimes I'll combine those things, but today we're doing a combination of some makeup while talking about the movie featured on this palette, which is the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So this palette called The House of Horrors is inspired by the Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and it's one of the movies I really do enjoy. So we're going to get into talking about that movie as we do some makeup. So if you're interested in seeing my thoughts on Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and also if you're, or if you're interested in seeing some makeup, um, then just keep on watching. If you like videos like this, definitely hit the like button below and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this in the future. So without further ado, let's go ahead and hop into the video. I greatly apologize if you hear music in the background. That is unavoidable at the moment, but I, maybe I can put some background music in the video. I don't know. But anyways, we're hopping into this House of Horrors makeup shadow eyeshadow palette from Wicked Sisters Cosmetics. I've featured this brand on my channel many times before and they are a brand that I really do enjoy because of their themes. They're always doing spooky themed makeup all year round and so I enjoy buying from them. Uh, their formula is also pretty good. It's not my favorite formula and I wouldn't say that it's like the best formula. Um, but I think that it's very much serviceable and this is a whole experience when you buy from them. You're getting the packaging as well as the color story, etc, etc. And so this one obviously is based on Texas Chainsaw Massacre and uh, yeah, we're going to talk about that as we do some eyeshadow. So if you're interested, check out Wicked Sisters Cosmetics. They're a pretty cool brand. But with that being said, let's hop into some makeup and talking about the Texas mirror. Look, it has Sally's eyes which was like a real focal point in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre during the dinner scene. And then we have some really cool shades like Van, shade names rather, Van, Chainsaw, Sledgehammer, Texas, Hitchhiker. It's really, really cool. So really love it. We're going to get into it though. And this look story is definitely more neutral. So I'm going to end up with a pretty neutral look today. I'm going to hop into the shade Hippie. And let's get into this movie. So I believe Texas Chainsaw Massacre came out in the 70s. I want to say 74. I don't know if that is absolutely correct. But definitely I feel like this one was such a cornerstone for horror movies. Or is a cornerstone for horror movies. Because of the way it is shot. And it's like, oh, this is a true story. Which it totally is not a true story. It is based on Ed Gein or Gein. I have someone told me how to say it and I forgot. I think it's Ed Gein who actually did do some horrific things but a lot of different characters are based on that real life man um, but they're not necessarily true characters themselves. For example, I believe uh, Hannibal Lecter from Silence of the Lambs was also based on Ed Gein as well so it's not like this is you know a real actual chainsaw wielding villain you know. Um, next I'm going to hop into the shade Pocket Knife, which is a nice brown. Um, but yeah, I think them claiming that it was a true story really hyped this movie up. I think this was probably the first movie to do that. But when we get into the story, we're following a group of young kids, I would say maybe around college age, um, traveling to Texas to see two of the main characters, going to two of the main characters' family home or something in that nature and they're in texas obviously texas chainsaw massacre um and while they're fooling around they wander onto the property of the you know leatherface and his family and of course that is where they meet their demises so very very basic plot um but again this came out quite a while before a lot of other horror movies that we see nowadays that have similar plots to this um and so oh, also if you've not seen the texas chainsaw massacre the original one probably don't watch this because there are going to be spoilers and things it's a pretty old movie so i don't mind talking spoilers at least in this video and this is not like an official review or anything just playing on some makeup and talking about a really cool movie that's all um but yeah so they wander onto this property and uh the first two that get onto the property i am not remembering their names at all but they go into the house that was their first bad choice 
don't walk into someone's house you don't know anything about stranger i realized it was a different time though but so and of course they are met with leatherface one thing that's very scary about this movie is the sound or the lack thereof sound like there's not really any music playing as you would see in a lot of modern horror movies it's just silence and so when you're met with silence and then you're meeting something super scary like what do you see in this movie it is i feel a bit even more impactful like sometimes it's appropriate to have no music and i think this movie is that example there's not a lot of background noises except for what we're hearing from the chainsaw or people screaming and it totally fits for this movie but as we are following these characters the first two get kind of picked off quite quickly fast and we're left with uh sally her boyfriend and her brother franklin who is in a wheelchair um and the boyfriend goes off to find the other two and uh he gets met with the sledgehammer and leatherface um and from that point on sally wants to go find her boyfriend sally wants to go find her man right so her and franklin traverse through going to the same area and leatherface pops out for one of the best jump scares i think of all time because it's completely dead silent it's completely dead silent except for like franklin talking about he kind of sees something and they're walking through the wood it's dark you can't really see anything like a lot of this movie is dark through the woods part and then leatherface just pops out it is one of the best jump scares uh seriously i'm going into the truck driver now give this a little bit of color to this look um and leatherface just pops out and gets franklin seriously one of the best jump scares especially if you've not which if you've not seen this movie again you probably should not be watching this video but i think for first time viewers really good jump scare really good jump scare um and from then on it's we're just following sally as she's trying to survive this family which is another thing leatherface is not alone in these movies he's the one wielding the chainsaw but honestly it's a lot of his family members that are the ones really calling the shots um and they're all together this really villainous eating people you know family but um I think my favorite characters in this definitely I really like the hitchhiker because he's just so out there not like not like him as a person but his character very very interesting now there's a dog barking my dog barking okay at least I think the dog stopped barking well, let me continue I'm gonna go into this gold shade Texas I've been looking at it pretty much the whole time so anyways um, I think the hitchhiker is one of my favorite characters just because of how out there he is he really is just completely out there um but yeah anyways this movie is really good like i don't know what else to say it's just a really good movie i know some people don't like it um but for me i just think there you won't ever get any conditions like how they had within this movie like they were filming in terrible conditions which is not good like that's not good i'm not saying that uh, and that happened in you know that happened in a lot during this times or the directors just kind of took it too far. I mean, look at The Shining, Shelley Duvall. Um, and to get the best performance, I just don't think that that will happen at all. Of course, that won't happen nowadays because there's protection for people that are working. But I think that the uniqueness of having those conditions and having those actors in those positions is what got us this product of something that feels almost like forbidden to watch you know it's just so raw so gritty it almost feels like you're really watching this go down and i think that's one of the things that makes this movie so unique we won't ever get something like that um and i just like everything about it i really do um even the dinner scene when that went on way too long time with all that screaming i think it added to the heightened fear like i feel like that's how a real person would react if they were surrounded by that just screaming screaming so let me finish up this eye you guys and i'll be right back about the lower line. lash line let me go into the lower lash line i'm going to take some of the greens actually just have it be like a pop down there taking truck driver onto this refer 02 
while we're at it, let's mention some of those kind of working conditions that the actors had to go through. If you're ever interested, look it up because it's very interesting. Um, some of the conditions they were working in to film this. Number one, they weren't getting paid that much, apparently. Um, the house they filmed in was very hot. I think they actually filmed this in Texas, I want to say. And it was very, very hot. Um, they used real bones and like animal parts, I believe, in the movie. So it did not smell very well either in the place they were filming. Hot, miserable conditions. And the actors uh, reportedly said they were filming some scenes for extremely long times. I think some of the times might be a little exaggerated, but I think there was mentions of like 14, 15 hours up to even 20 something hours filming one scene. I don't think that that's exaggerated. I think there's somewhere one of those numbers is not true, obviously, because that's quite a big, kind of big difference between 20 and the same. Yeah, I just feel like you would not see those conditions today. Um, they were having to film in very terrible conditions. The actors were miserable filming in a hot house for long hours and yeah it just was terrible so um again some of those reactions and the kind of the screams and things that we see are quite very real right, you guys so here i am back with the final look i literally uh you know put some mascara on put some lipstick on i did my whole face what am i talking about i <laughs> it's been like a minute um i used a lot of some of my staple products i did use two products that are new to me for the first time i used this elf cream contour palette which i bought kind of a few weeks ago from ulta maybe more than a few weeks maybe about a month ago have never used use it today for my contour or bronzer situation and then i used this mac glow play blush in rosie does it and this is my first time using this formula from mac i got this out of the boxy charm so i really enjoyed both of those products a lot everything else was just like staple things that i've been using although this new um giorgio is not new but this armani uh giorgio armani luminous silk perfect glow flawless foundation is newer to me i've used it a couple times though so but yeah finish everything up put on some earrings i was struggling i was putting on another pair of earrings for like 10 minutes I thought my ears had closed and then I put these on and they went straight through and I'm like oh, okay it's, maybe it's just those earrings are too thick or something I don't know um and then put my hair up in a ponytail so this is everything you guys I really do like the palette and like I said I love the theming of this brand um we got a pretty neutral look which is all you pretty much want to get with this but I have to say it was fun playing with it and it's fun to just sit and talk about one of my favorite uh horror movies i don't know if it will be like in my top 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 but i do always enjoy it i love the kind of authenticness to it and it's just a fun movie if you never okay if you've never seen it you shouldn't be watching this video but if you haven't seen it in a long time definitely go and put this on for october i think it's a perfect halloween movie because it is pretty scary just the thought of it and some of the like uncomfortableness throughout the movie is quite frightening I love seeing people's reaction to this one on YouTube. It's amazing. I have seen the second one. I actually did a first time. Oh, it wasn't the first time watch. I did. I watched it for the first time and then I reviewed it right after. It's here on my channel. So it's not a first time like watching with it on the screen. But I had just finished it and came back and reviewed it on camera. So I have seen the second one. I have not seen any other in this. That's a lie. I've seen some of the newer ones. I've seen the remake and then... The one with like Trey songs in it, which was pretty bad. But I've seen those, and then I've seen the original one, and then the number two, Texas Chainsaw Massacre two. I've seen that one, but I have not seen any other other movies in this franchise, and I know there's a lot of them. Um, so maybe I'll do some first time reaction to those. Uh, maybe not this month because I have a lot of stuff going on, but I definitely want to watch the rest. I've heard the third one is okay, or some people think it's. A little bit more serious a bit of a scarier leather face than in the first two which i'm interested to see i know the fourth one is kind of crazy so you guys let me know should i continue watching the rest of the texas chainsaw massacre or should i just stick with the first and the second one because i really like both of those the second one was really good i like the tonal shift in it even though it kind of is completely different i think we get some iconic iconic characters in that one as well so i really like the first one and the second one although they're very different Anyways, you guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you enjoy content like this and want to see more just chatting about horror movies. Definitely leave me your thoughts on the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I know there are different opinions on this one, but I feel like this one is really highly regarded overall. 
So definitely leave me your thoughts on it down below or any interesting facts um, about it that I maybe know or don't know. I would love to hear it. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Stay safe. I'll see you in the next one very, very soon. Adios.